Hey guys, Super Nintendo here with something a little bit different today. Uh, I decided that in addition to reviews that I would talk to you guys directly about something, you know, a random topic in my life or video games or, you know, just to keep things interesting during the week so you guys didn't have to wait for another video each Friday. So this week I want to talk about the time that I worked at a retro video game store. Now, I know that a lot of people have worked at video game stores, usually when they were about 16, but I worked at the video game store when I was 32, so actually I didn't work there too long, but I just wanted to share with you my experience. Let's start off with how I actually got the job. So I was at the video game store, I picked up Kingdom Hearts and I was waiting for them to resurface the disc, and I overheard the manager talking to his clerk about how they were trying to fill the position that they had open and basically the problems that they had run into was that the person didn't know about video games or they had to leave at eight o'clock to get home because they didn't live anywhere near the store just you know the struggles of finding a good quality employee and so i asked them i said hey, are, are you guys hiring and he says well yeah but we're only hiring for the weekends. And well, I said that was great for me because I currently work a full-time job five days a week, Monday through Friday, and it would be cool to actually work at a video game store. So he asked me for my resume, and of course I didn't have it. So I went home, talked it over with my wife, just to see if you know I could handle an extra eight hours during the week uh, you know, to earn some extra money. So I got my resume brought it in and the next day uh, the manager he called me up and asked if I wanted to come in for an interview so came in for the interview before the store opened we're sitting there and basically the interview questions aren't really what I was used to is kind of like what systems do you own and I said well I own an Intellivision I own an Atari, I own an Xbox, I own a Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and he's like, whoa, 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 all right, that's it, you know, of course you own a lot of systems. Since we work at a retro store, he said, like, some of the applicants, they said, like, oh, the most retro console that I own is an Xbox 360, so, of course, you know, I, I was fairly qualified in that regard. So, he said that he still had some interviewees to look over, and he eventually called me back saying that I got the job so and that I could start the next following week. So what was my day-to-day -day like? Well, so to start out, I had to be there at about 11.30, 11.45 to make sure that I was there to prep the store before it opened. And then um, I would help the owner unload his car because he had some stuff that needed to be sold that day or just random stuff that needed to be you know, unload and put into the basement or whatever you have. So then that took about, you know, about 10 minutes to unload his car. And then I would flick on all of the demo kiosks because he had a Super Nintendo kiosk, a Dreamcast kiosk. Uh, I made sure that all of the games were kind of faced to make sure um, that they were ready for sale for the next day. And then at 12 o'clock, made sure that the door was unlocked and we were open for business. Then, during the rest of the day, we would clean games. Now, sometimes I would clean just like, just random games. So like uh, Super Nintendo games. Uh, one time I cleaned an Atari 400 and that thing had cockroaches in it. It was just filthy. I mean, some people just didn't keep track of their games. Either that or he found them in like laying in a basement that, it, you know, for the past 50 years. Then the store would close at around like eight o'clock and so my job would be to sweep the floors and clean the windows and make sure that the glass counter was free of fingerprints uh, and then go back into the back room and pick up any games that we needed to fill the op open spots because obviously you can't go back and fill up with an extra Super Smash Brothers, you need to find like another game. So sometimes it would be a good quality game and others is just a filler title like Madden or something like that. So let's talk about the customers that came into the store. Now there were three types of customers that would come in. You had your regulars, you had your 
just the person that came in off the street and then you had the hardcore collectors. The majority of the people who came in were people who had never even known that the store existed. Uh, these are the people who came in and are like, oh man, I remember that I had an Atari or I remember Nintendo you know, 64. Uh, and then those people would be more inclined to actually purchase a system just um, on a whim. And then you have the regulars who come in. Uh, there's one guy who always sold games. Uh, there was one guy who was, he was always looking for a specific manual. Uh, every week he would come in, uh, you know, chat us up and everything like that. You eventually get to know the people who come into the store, which is really nice, you know, for a small business like that to keep track of your regular customers. And then we had the hardcore collectors. Now those guys would actually make the pilgrimage to Chicago just to visit this place. Like some people they came from as far as California, they've known about the store in Chicago. They were just happened to be here visiting. So they decided to get some more games. So like one time this one guy, he came in with a list of games, Nintendo games that he hadn't had yet. And so he would just, you know, I want this game, this game, and this game and we would you know put him on his way and he spend like about four hundred dollars and then even then his visa would put a stop on the card because he was making an outstanding purchase out of state you know it's just the crazy kind of things that people will do to actually buy video games sometimes you get some crazy customers that come in uh you know most of the people are pretty laid back uh, we do have a check bag policy and that's not something that people really uh, were familiar with so some people would be like you know get really upset that we needed to take their bag in order to enter the store but it's you know basic loss prevention we want to make sure that you know these things aren't coming off the shelves and leaving you know without people paying but um, one of the worst customers that I got was that we had um, a bunch of controllers on the back where they were all on pegs and this guy comes in and he doesn't say anything he just goes okay what person who wants to take off everything off of those pegs and read me off everything one by one and we kind of looked at him and kind of furl our brow and I was like okay and then he asked again and he's like who wants to take off every single item off of there and you know read them off to me and so I come up and I you know I have a decent amount of customer service so I come in and I say well what is it that you're looking for and he's like oh, I hate that question and I was like well we have you know like these are you know the Sega Genesis controllers it goes from chronological order all the way from you know Atari down to Xbox one on this side uh, you know if there's something that you like to collect maybe I can find it for you and he's like no I, I hate that question you know if I wanted to hear that question I go to GameStop and he just came off really condescending and I just went well if you need anything else I'll be right over here and then like I turned around and I just went back about my business and so then he um, got the other clerk to pick off every item one by one. And it just, he was there for about 35 minutes and he eventually bought like a random mouse or something like that for, it was like $25. And he like held it up and he's like, see, you never would have sold this if you hadn't have actually taken the time to pull off all of those pegs and then show me each one of the things. Like, you know, I'm kind of informed on the business thing. I, I know that it took a long time to actually sell that specific item. I'm pretty sure that the owner didn't pay $20 to sell that item. So I'm pretty sure that that guy was just a douche and it just, it just rubbed me the wrong way. But you know, he never came in again and it was, oh well. <clears throat> so eventually after the <clears throat> <clears throat> so overall working at a video game store is a lot of fun I learned a lot um, I learned about trends about like what people are actually looking for um, you know there's a lot of collectors that are looking for some oddball items but the regular people are looking for 
Super Smash Brothers for the Nintendo 64. So much so that we would get about five calls a day asking if they had it in stock. So I would actually check before we opened to see if we had a copy of it. And you know, if we did, then I could tell like say, okay, yeah, we have it and it's, you know, how much it was at the time, $50. And they would ask to hold on to it and come in. But then I also learned how to clean video games, take care of them, uh, and just also see like a lot of rare stuff that I wouldn't normally see otherwise. And that was really the fun thing about working for that game store. And unfortunately I had to quit because I did work every Saturday and coupled that with a 40 hour a week job with school and a wife and a dog. I just, I just got burnt out because all my friends would hang out on Saturdays and I couldn't because you know, I would get out of work at about 10 o'clock at night and you know, it's no fun in that. So, and of course, like it was getting towards the summer. It wasn't fair to, to keep taking days off, you know, when he could fill a position with somebody who'd be more reliable. And so we just parted ways, but it was a really good experience and I'm glad that I could share it with you. Uh, I talk about these little things uh, once a week. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you like what I do here, please subscribe. I also do video reviews every Friday and thanks for watching.